This episode is sponsored by JDAQA Software Testing, your scalable solution for manual, automated, security, and performance testing. Check us out at JDAQA.com. And with that, let's get on with the show. This is The First Customer, hosted by Jay Agnew. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the First Customer Podcast. My name is Jay Agner. Today, I'm lucky enough to be joined by Pete Taylor, CEO and founder of The Waken Man Project. Peter, hello. Jay, hello. Good to be here. Great to talk to you, brother. Let's get right into it. Where'd you grow up and did that have any impact on you being an entrepreneur? Do you know, I grew up just outside of London, right? Did it have an impact on me being an entrepreneur? Do you know, I, there was a, a hustle for me from a real early age. I Do you remember Pokemon cards? Did you have yeah, them over yeah, in the kids, U.S.? My kids back into them now really right i've actually still got like an old school collection but in my school days i was selling them in the playground early days it was just like i i, I remember selling a, a shiny charizard for 20 pounds and back then it was like the, the talk of the school right. right so that was like my first like a little entrepreneurial endeavor okay and what was the actual first business you tried to start after that for you know the first business i started as an entrepreneur after that it was a long time after that right i was doing little i did little side hustles like here and there you know i, I saw quick wins and making a little bit of side money but i was in corporate for about 15 years and the first business i set up was an architectural company and that was that grew into a you know half de decent sized business i had half a dozen people working for us and we had a big three story building so the my first actual endeavor grew into something quite substantial who was your first customer for that business? First customer for that business was my existing employer. Of course it was. That's always, that's almost always the case. Or somebody you knew or somebody in your network, which is, I think people uh, get tired of me saying, but... Uh, we, planned, you, we, we planned it. We planned it. parlay that? Yeah, I was going to say, how did you kind of make that transition? Yeah, so, we're like, so I was working in corporate. I decided, I was like, hang on a minute, we can do this, right? The job that we're doing, that I'm working for someone else, I can absolutely do this. We're on site. We're managing hundreds of people. We've got all the skill sets here. Let's go do this for ourselves. And I knew because we had so many projects that we were running for that company, I knew they, ha they really had no option to employ us as a contractor afterwards. And it was part of my positioning. Hey, I'm going to leave, but I do have a solution for you. So you're not going to be left in the lurch. Here's all the projects I can continue running for you. And here's going to be our rate to do so. And so it was quite, it was like a leverage. We, we, we were in a point of leverage. I like that. Um, what led you to the Awakened Man project? What, what is it, first of all, and kind of what, how did you get there? The Awakened, so the architecture business, I grew over six years. And from an external point of view, it was, it, it looked successful from the outside. I had the nice car and the nice house and the, I had, we had nearly 20 people. We had a big three story building just outside of London, but internally for me, I wasn't that happy. I, I was, I felt very lonely. I had a lot of uh, in, internal struggles. I didn't really know what I, what I truly wanted. I thought I wanted X and I got X and I didn't actually want it when I got there. And so we, like I accidentally set up the Awakened Man project, which was, I was, I was looking for like a, a mastermind where I could just jam with other business owning men that was what it was and i couldn't find it so i created my own and then this project just started stemming from that when we had all these other guys wanting to join and join and our little group of 10 grew to a group of 100 and then to a group of thousand and now it's in the tens of thousands of people that follow us so the awake man project stemmed from something that i needed as a guy just to be around other high level guys and to help us all think differently to untwist our minds like that tagline by the way that's a great tagline um talk to me a little bit about the that what you just mentioned it's a great point is goals are something you strive for and then you hit them and they're just like a sliver of time right there's no balloons that fall out of the ceiling there's no streamers that go off there's no it's just a moment in time whether that's uh, a yearly revenue goal or some sort of you know other arbitrary goal you set up talk to me a little bit about your experience in that and, and dealing with that, like you said, it was, it, sometimes it can feel hollow. And what did you do to kind of work, work through that? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I had all these like hedonistic goals. I wanted the cars and I wanted to like, 
I remember when, I, when we hit our first seven figures, and I didn't really, I didn't even know I hit it. We were really, <laughs> just like, oh, right, we've done that. Well, that wasn't the big shebang that I thought it was going to be. Damn, I've still got all the staff to pay. Right. <laughs> oh, we've still got all the customers to deal with, and oh, quick, just straight back to it. So I soon learned very quickly that, actually, like, the, the money thing and, like, the getting the, the, like, the nice materialistic things, I still like that. I'm, and I'm still well in the earning more money, and I'm, like, and I'm not afraid to admit that. Like, I still have way more levels to get to that I want to complete. And that's a big, like, driver of mine. What I was really fortunate to find, and this did take me some time to find, was that when I accidentally created the Awaken Man project, that gave me, uh, it gave me purpose. Because I was able to use all of the work that I'd done on myself to heal myself, to then help other guys heal themselves and, and to do better. And I, so I accidentally found this like internal fulfillment from helping others. And that's what's been a driver for me now is, yeah, I love the business side and I love growing the business and I love creating things. I love building things, but that internal fulfillment of being able to help others is the, the next thing for me. What would you suggest to people or advice you'd give them around making those goals more? meaningful when you hit them is there some way to celebrate them or when you're creating them making them more meaningful because i mean i did the same thing right you hit a million or whatever you hit two million you go oh that's cool and then you're just like kind of back to it but it's something you drove you drive at really hard for a long time and it's just this kind of carrot you dangle in front of yourself is there something there to celebrate more is the goal incorrectly kind of calibrated to begin with what is it do you think that is off there that's not matching your your thoughts the whole time you're driving towards this thing and you get there and you go oh so is it, is it you know kind of enjoying the journey more which is kind of a cliche phrase obviously or what is the way to make those goals more meaningful yeah it is cliche to say enjoy the journey it, it's true what's now working for me is rather than me aiming towards and i still have goals i still have like milestones that i'm looking to achieve but now what's more meaningful to me and that helps me strive day to day is living by standards so it's like this is the standard of life that i want to live this is the standard of man that i want to be i'm not that man yet i i can see him right like, like that's like the 10.0 version of pete and he has these values he has these rules that he's he lives by and he has these standards of life and that's what i'm striving towards and as long as that, that like the way that I lay down at night and I go to sleep is that I validate myself, not on the amount of money that I've earned that day, but I validate myself on me consistently taking the actions towards living that standard of living. Does that make sense? Yeah. No, I like that a lot. That's a, that's a concrete way to continue to kind of get better, which I like. How do you stick with those goals though? How do you, you know, if you have a, five million dollar a year revenue goal how do you stick with that on a day-to-day -day basis i have a blueprint i know that I know that if i stick to that blueprint it's just it's a protocol and I, as and i like i pride myself on being disciplined with that protocol so it's like structural discipline do you so there's like backwards th from your goals do you kind of set those goals and kind of i mean it sounds like a very disciplined way to do it i'm this is more for myself than anybody else i'm curious like how are you working backwards from those goals yeah, so I actually look at this in three forms of discipline. So I will, I do have a big vision, which I then were I like reverse engineered, broken that down, and okay, well, that's the bigger vision over the next five to ten years, and now let's actually look at it from a short term perspective. And here's the year, break it down into the quarter, break it down into the month, break it down into the week, into the day, um, which is what I've done. So it's very, so that's very like st structured. Okay, so there's a structure there, and I'm dis and I'm, my discipline is to stick to that structure and stick to those actions. But the the next two types of discipline that I would adhere to is a reactive discipline. So this is now now like in the moment. And so and I like I like this because it means I I get to be really aware. So from between stimulus and response, there is a gap. Right. Every single between every single freaking moment, there is a gap and I get to choose how I react within that gap, like my attitude within that gap. So do I get freaking angry when someone says something to me? Do I react or am I responsive in a way that 
is aligned with my values and my standards as a man. All right, so that's the reactive discipline. And then the other discipline is expansive, which is the hardest. And I'm admittedly, I find this the hardest is moment to moment thinking bigger. So moment to moment, being able to expand on what I want to achieve and like moment to moment, making like the power move rather than the safe move, right? Which is, it's the hardest discipline to master, but it's the one that will, that we consistently practice that will, will really elevate. I love that. I love the stimulus and reaction gap. I do the, the waking up app. Sam Harris talked about that a lot. I mean, he's also kind of almost cliche to, to, to do meditation and to listen to that, but there is that gap. Once you realize your disconnect, there's a disconnect there between the thing that happens and the re response. It's a powerful moment where you yeah. can go, oh, I can actually choose to respond. So they said, you know, the feeling, you're going to have those feelings rise up. Like you said, that stimulus, the anger, the whatever, it's, it, those are going to happen and that's okay. And that's kind of just part of being a normal human. It is the reaction to that stimulus, though, that, that that's really important. Though. So I love that. And that's something I, with five kids, obviously have to work on every second yeah. of every day. Yeah, uh, it's like it's like that when, that when those feelings and emotions of anger come, it's how far do you let them go? Did they, and, then, and it turns into aggression, which is then, you know, it's, it, that's not a good place to be. But because like, anger is a great emotion, you, you know, you've got healthy anger. It's a fantastic emotion. It's just that when it crosses the border into... The aggression side is that when it can get violent and a little bit dangerous and that's potential and it's potentially bad. Yeah. So it's being able to like, ah, right. I'm in the moment now. And am I going to choose to keep this anger going and take it across the line or am I going to stay in it and be healthy in it? Yeah. Right. That's, those are all great points. And do you actually have, first of all, what tool do you use to keep track of your goals? If you're backing all the way down from a, five to 10 year vision to a yearly to quarter to monthly to weekly to daily. What are you using to keep track of that? I use two things. Mega simple. Number one, old I knew, school. I knew you were going to hold up a notebook. It's <laughs> old school. It's just so like I've tried the, I, I, like I tried all the apps and all the online dashboards and I, and I love a dashboard. I've got dashboard to track all my metrics and my business. And I just couldn't, it was just the old school way of just having that with me all the time. And I can write in it and I can quickly have a look at it and see what's going on. The other thing that I do use, which is digital, is that I do have an app. I have an app with our Awakened Man, right? So which we use with all our clients and I use it with my clients to help them build discipline in like personal development and like, and, and self-development. So there's certain protocols that we'll have them go through, but I will put my own protocols in there. So every, I just, so I, it's just literally, I could just t touch it and it ticks it off. So, and because there's many things that I will do day to day, which are repetitive, it's very easy for me just to go, right. Well, I know I'm going to do those things pretty much every day for the next month, put them in my app and then I just tick them off as well as my diary. So yeah, okay. bit of both, bit of a hybrid. That's a good, that's a good plug for your app. So tell me who is kind of a good fit for the Make Awakened Man project? guys the guys that want more out of life guys that they're not bro they're not broken men they don't need fixing these are guys that that act actively want growth and are willing to step into growth they're men that probably feel that they're playing at a level three or a level four on their potential scale they've got level 10 in the bag they know they've got it there they're just not quite there yet and haven't figured out why they're typically highly skilled men, very highly skilled, and they know other guys that have the same or similar skill set to them, yet are achieving way more. And typically when I see that, there's normally some internal resistance. There's internal beliefs or something or, or internal fears, something's going on internally that's just holding them back subconsciously. There are guys, because I put them in, I put them in an arena where there are other guys that are playing on a high level. And we talk around like men's psychology and you see other guys playing the same game you are and, and they're achieving more. It unlocks a lot more for you. What's the, and this may be giving away a little bit of the secret sauce, but what is the biggest hang up you see from, and I always tell people, I don't think it's hard 
to make a seven figure business, a low seven figure business, one or two million dollars, I think is pretty attainable. And you see that a lot. What's the biggest hang up you see from guys that can do that, taking it to the high sevens to the eights? What's the biggest hang up there that's preventing that? Typically, it's team. I, like I, I find from taking a business from like low sevens up to the eight is team is is getting great team members around you and like a lot it depends how big the company you want to grow the company as well but i find like a lot of those guys who've got to like maybe like low seven figures a lot of them it's just like hustle and they like they're good guys they got half decent product they de they deliver so they've got great service and they've just hustled uh, and then they've got there but then when they've got there like Fuck, i don't know what I'm doing. i don't know what to do now this is crazy. Like, how do I hire people? Like, hire people? Well, I don't know how to hire. I don't know how to interview. I'd like, I don't know what the system's involved. I don't know what to do there. So, and like, we typically, there's two things that are going on. The founder is the bottleneck normally, and they just haven't got the right team members in place. And then you get the right, you get the right team, get some A players in there, and then relieve the founder from being such a bottleneck and just get him to focus on what he's really great at. And the business can, can accelerate pretty quickly. All right, mystery question time. Non-business related, I'm curious with a guy who's very goal-driven and probably could do anything he wants to do. If there was anything you could do on the entire planet and you knew you couldn't fail, what would it be? It would absolutely be to influence 10 million men. Do you know what? Fuck it, 100 million men. <laughs> yeah, you can't fail. You could just can't fail. Every, every can't man fail. on earth. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, can't fail. A hundred million men to positively impact a hundred million men to get them living up to their potential. And is that, you mentioned it earlier, but I mean, is that your form of giving back? Yeah. Hands down. I, I can never, I know it. It's just like, I get messages from guys all the time on my social media. And just like they're watching my, they're watching my content and they're using my content and they're following what I'm doing and they get results and their lives are changing and it feels freaking awesome. So I, I know that is my form of giving back. I'm glad you've embraced it. There's kind of like a, there can, people get, I think people hold back because they, there's this, you know, thought that you shouldn't enjoy giving back, right? You should, that shouldn't be, you shouldn't enjoy it too much. Right. It shouldn't be like this, but that is, that's, I think you hit a certain point and you go, this is what's exciting to me. It is, is exciting. Like, this is what I like to do. This, this charges me up. So if you want to find you, Pete, if they want to find the Awakened Man Project or anything else you got going on, where do they find you? Best place is my Instagram. It's Pete underscore Taylor. And the, the Awakened Man profile is pinned there. It's, it's the best place to find me. All right. Well, uh, you're fantastic. I think I got charged up after this. Maybe I'm an Awakened Man after this uh. call. So. All right, Pete, it's great talking to you, and I appreciate you being on. I'll talk to you again soon, all right, brother? Cheers, Jay. Thanks, Pete. See ya.